Picture middle school English. Your teacher wants you to read a story and do a write-up on two of the characters. Compare and contrast. Okay, easy. One's super talkative, kind of distractible. The other works hard, super shy though. How do you feel about yourself after this write-up? I feel fine, glad my assignment's done. How do you feel when you compare yourself against another person, someone real and amazing? I don't think we want to do it, but yet we measure ourselves against other people all the time. I think we're looking to define who we are, how good we are, and we're using other people as our measuring stick. But the thing is, no matter what anyone else is doing or who they are, it doesn't have a thing to do with us. So why do we keep on measuring ourselves against everyone else? Sometimes it's because we want to feel better. We want to look at someone else's work or how they're living their life and think, wow, I'm amazing, I'm better, I can love myself now, I have value now. But then the other side of that coin's true. You look and you see someone else more amazing than you, and you just think, I'm awful, I'm terrible. Now the other drive for comparison is actually a really good one. It's for improvement. Let's say you see someone else's amazing coloring and you think, wow, I want to learn to color like that. It's interesting because both of these scenarios start out exactly the same, comparing ourselves against other people but they immediately diverge to different thoughts, different feelings, and night and day results. I wanna put these two comparison scenarios into a self-coaching model for you. We're gonna find out why they can start in the identical place, but end completely differently. First scenario, let's say you see someone's card on Instagram and you think, my coloring's awful. How's that make you feel? I feel super discouraged. What do you do when you feel that way? Probably fixate on it, focus on all the reasons why you can't be good at coloring or don't have the time. Probably not feeling very creative and definitely not spending time coloring. What's the result of that? Pretty simple, you get worse at coloring. Now let's look at the other scenario. You see that same card on Instagram and you think, wow, I wanna learn to color like that. How are you feeling? Probably a little curious. What do you do? Send a direct message, ask them straight out, maybe take the same coloring course, practice, practice, practice every day. You wanna learn and see if you can color like that. You're curious. And what's your result? You learn to color like that. I've got a lot more information for you over at my blog if you're interested in learning more about running self-coaching models on yourself. I'll link it for you in the description. I just gotta say, it is the most helpful tool if you wanna understand why you do what you do and how to change it if you'd like. Wouldn't it be amazing if our value didn't need to bounce around every time we saw someone else and their incredible work? Life is pretty much one social experience after another. Even right now, when we're all apart, we're still so connected and we're still comparing. But before you try to shift to a more useful thought, something needs to happen first. You need to learn how to love yourself. And I'm talking about a love from within. One that's completely separate from other people. It's separate from their compliments, it's separate from their love for you, and it's definitely separate from comparing ourselves and using other people as that mood-boosting ruler. So everything else aside, What's amazing about you? What have you worked really hard to learn? What good things have you put into the world lately? Who have you helped? What are you amazing at? Why are you just so lovable? You totally are, you know? I know we like to shy away from this, like it's boastful or prideful, but you know what I've noticed we're really good at? Downplaying ourselves. Let's switch that around. When you love yourself, and when you accept yourself, you take that same mindset and you extend it into your interactions with everyone else. So let me just say it like this. Good things come from loving yourself. Do it completely and totally shamelessly. I want you to take some time and actually write out why you love yourself. 15 reasons. Now I know I said to find this from within, but I wanna give you a little outside evidence just to prod you along, get you started. I know to other people, you're their amazing example. I've seen this in fellow card makers. They defer to other people as being better than them in this or that. 
But the very thing that they're downplaying is something that I respect in them. Was that clear enough? In a nutshell, I think they're more amazing than they think they are. And I want you to see that amazingness in yourself. You just be you and start loving yourself for it. Now this is a process, it's not instant. But over time, comparison's gonna become less and less of a big deal. Because it won't be about your worth anymore. You know you're amazing no matter what. Comparison can become a great thing. It can be a source of inspiration and growth and even new friendships. Love you guys. I think you're amazing. So come down to the comments and tell me what's amazing about you. And check out this video where I choose to love my on-hand supplies and why I think you should too.